Hi, and welcome back to my playthrough of The Darkest Night. I already mentioned it, this game is really a rune minefield. I think up to now I'm not doing too bad actually, but of course I did at least one rule misinterpretation. Good thing is it really did not affect the gameplay at all, uh, it just limited me in respect to options I had. And this is in respect to this Evil Day event card, which says exhaust a power or draw two more events. And I thought you're only allowed to exhaust powers that really explicitly say you have to exhaust them at any point in time. But that's not the case. When the card says exhaust a power, you can all more or less exhaust all the powers that are available. I think I decided to draw two um, event cards instead of that. I think the effect of that was not too bad, but I think from now on I will definitely have a look at that. Next little thing I more or less only forgot to do is when I used this Vanish action from the Rogue the last time, I think he rolled three successes and that's why he rolled, I think, additionally with this Shadow Cloak. So in the end he rolled two dice for um, eluding a character or a Blight, I'm not, not so sure anymore what this was. But he rolled at least two successes, in fact these were three, so he's now allowed to gain an additional secrecy. I hope these were all my errors and yeah, little things I forgot to um, more or less adjust during my last playthrough. So I think we can directly get started. And as usual, I will start with the wizard. I think this might be an easy one. There is no real evil blight at the castle at this point in time. So we can directly jump into the event phase. And this is a demon and we have to compare to his secrecy and the current secrecy of the wizard is five. And so we are facing a fearful demon here with a strength of three and an awareness of four. And in case of a failure, we would lose two secrecy. I think we will definitely give it a try. The wizard could use his lightning strike, but I think that's not necessary. So he will just roll one die and it really doesn't matter. So for fighting and for eluding, we are only allowed to roll one die. So I think we will definitely fight it. It's easier. So we need at least a three here. And this time he's doing much better, so this demon is not really a problem for the wizard. Now the fun part start. Again, he tries to search through the castle. Again, we have a search difficulty of two. In my opinion, that's definitely a job that you can achieve. So let's try that. He failed twice, as you might remember. And yeah, this time he's more successful. Then let's draw ourselves our map part and see what we have here for the castle and this is a supply cache and a supply cache is also not too bad because this allows you to draw two of your power cards so in this case these are the wizard power cards and then you are allowed to choose one to keep on the left you see the rune of misdirection and the right one is the rune of clairvoyance and they are both definitely cool but i think the rune of clairvoyance is definitely cooler as it is allows you to look at the top of each of the deck and then decide whether to keep it on top of the deck or if you want to send it to the bottom of the deck. Let's add that to the power deck here. Of course you first of all have to activate this rune here and as far as I know you can only enable one rune at a time. So anytime you would let's say go for another rune then this room would be deactivated first. Let's jump over to the rogue. I think the rogue really has to do some healing as he is down to one grace already. The problem is you only can heal within the monastery. First things first, he has to engage his event card and let's see what we have here. And this says dead servant. Again, we have to compare this to the secrecy. The secrecy of the rogue is four. So he encounters an archer with a strength of four and an awareness of four. And I think that's a no brainer for the rogue as he is allowed to roll in total three dice when eluding and he would even gain a secrecy if he manages to roll two successes. We are looking for fours or more here. And yeah, not a problem for him. So he eluded this dead servant and he can claim himself an additional secrecy. 
as his action, I think he will just move into the monastery. And as he is already at five secrecy, he's not allowed to gain an additional point for this movement action. As we are ending our turn in a safe spot here with no blights whatsoever, we don't have to face them, so he does not have to fight the Lich again. Let's take a walk into the forest and see what the Druid will, Druid will be up to. Um, right now he only needs to encounter the event first, so let's see what we have here. And this says Vengeful Spirit, compared to Secrecy again. He has a Secrecy of 4, so this will be a Shadow with a Strength of 4 and an Awareness of 6. And I think he will go once again for the Animal Companion here, which lets him roll with two Fight Dice and of course it has to be exhausted if he fails. Luckily, he only needs a 4 or higher in order to defeat this Vengeful Spirit, so I think this should be solvable. And yeah, that's a 5, not a problem. We can discard this Vengeful Spirit. And once more, the Druid will need to fight the Dark Fog. I think this is definitely a Blight. We need to get rid of, so again, we are going for our Animal Companion. This time, we need at least a 5 of the might of this dark fox so we let's hope for the best and yeah these are two sixes and that's awesome so we can definitely get rid of this dark fog here but as we attacked um, we have to also lower our secrecy by one point then we have to face the skeletons who will attack us and this time we will use our camouflage tactic and this lets us loo with two dice, but at least we don't suffer any um, bad things if we fail or um, succeed here. So let's roll two dice. We need again a four. And yeah, this is a six. Not a problem here. Awesome turn for the druid this time. Last but not least, we have to take care of our knight. The necromancer is present. So again, we have to lower our secrecy by one point. If we would be, or if she would be now on a secrecy of zero and the necromancer is present, in this case she would not encounter an event card, no, she would have to fight the necromancer for one turn. To be honest, I'm not so sure if drawing an event card is really the better option in this case, but um, we cannot help it, we have to draw our stuff an event card, and this is a tracker with a strength of four and awareness of five. If you win this fight, you would lose one secrecy. If you win elude, it would have no effect. And on a failure, on a complete failure, we would lose two secrecy. I think we will definitely roll our charge tactic card. So we are allowed to roll two dice here. And we are looking for force. Oh, this was lucky. So we win the, or we won the fight. But still, we are losing one secrecy and are down to zero. To be honest, I definitely don't know what I will do with the knight. She's a kind of lost at this location. So I'm really thinking of either moving away from this location or going for an attack action just to make it a little bit more easy for the other characters to come. And right now she still has a grace of four, so that's definitely not too bad. So yeah, let's go and try to defeat the skeletons here. Again, we will use our charge tactic. Two fight dice, we need a far. No, that's of course stupid, because the might is the same. We will definitely attack the Lich here. So let's go for that. We need a five. Ah, wow, we are lucky. Okay, so this Lich is now defeated. As we are already down to zero secrecy, there will be definitely no additional effect to that. But still, we have to engage the skeletons here because of the yeah, end of turn event here. And this is a little bit easier as I got rid of the Lich. So again, we go for the charge tactic and let's roll two dice. We are looking for fours and yeah, there's a four. So nothing else bad happens here. Let's quickly resolve the turn of the Necromancer. First of all, we will advance the Darkness track. We don't have to roll his dice now because the Knight is already down to zero and I would do that performer, but yeah, it's a six anyhow, so really doesn't matter. So the Necromancer stays where he is and let's see what kind of blight he is going to bring to the ruins here. And this time this is an unholy aura. And the unholy aura is a kind of a problem, 
especially in combination with his evil presence here. The problem with the unholy aura is it reduces the number of your fighting dice by one. Definitely not a good situation, especially for the knight. But overall it was not really a complete bad turn, so there might be some room left for some optimism here. Okay, let's start round number two of my playthrough for today. And we will again start with a wizard who is still at the castle. The problem is he's not allowed to use his rune yet because he needs to activate it first. And so we definitely have to go through a full round here again. So I think let's draw himself an event card. And this says close call. Roll one die and take the highest. And this time you're really looking for a five or a six. And no, that's a four. And this lets me lose one secrecy. Could be worse. As his action, we will now definitely activate the rune of the clairvoyance. So we will just put it here to make everyone aware this is now our active rune here. So with the start of his next turn, he can definitely check all the decks and decide whether to keep the card on top of the deck or we'll put it to the bottom of the deck. And this definitely can be pretty useful. So let's flip the turn tracker and go over to the rogue who is now in the monastery and he does not have to uh, draw an event card here so we definitely will go for a prey action. And praying is basically very simple. You roll two dice and for each three or higher you gain one grace back. So we, let's hope for the best here. And this is one five at least. We regain one grace. And as we stayed within the monastery our complete turn, we would also gain one secrecy. Okay, next stop is the druid in the forest. And yeah, let's see what event card he's about to draw. And again, this is a demon. And we are at three secrecy at this point in time, so this is a pretty deadly demon with a strength of four and an awareness of five. So I think we definitely have to go for a fighting action here, so we will use our animal companion power or tactic card and we would need at least a four here. And yeah, that's not a problem. Ooh, we are really lucky here, so we can discard this demon. And yeah, I think as his action we definitely will go through a search action here so we can now roll a die. And again, we are hoping for four or more. And yeah, we are damn lucky this time. So let's draw a map card and in the forest that's a key this time. Wow, that's really awesome. So we found ourselves the second key. Let's send that over to the druid. I think we can turn the turn tracker now accordingly but still we have to face the skeletons here and this time we will go for the camouflage tactic again two dice one four and ooh, again he's definitely doing good awesome job man the knight is really in a bad position here down by the ruins first of all there's the necromancer present and there's a whole lot of blights at this point in time the good thing is she cannot lose any secrecy, so you cannot drop below the zero. Good and bad, I don't know. This time she does not have to um, draw an event card. She has to face the Necromancer. The Necromancer has a strength of seven and an awareness of six. Of course, you might ask yourself, how can you beat this guy with a strength of seven? Yeah, you can do that with a holy relic. I think I explained that during my introduction video. And there might be maybe additional cards in play. I cannot really remember, but the holy relic is your safest bet in order to engage the necromancer. But of course, as we at least try to have a chance, we are going for an elude action. We have the evil presence here, which would subtract one die, but you're always allowed to roll at least one die. So we need a six and this is a five. Not bad, but definitely not good enough. So the knight has to lose one grace. As she and the druid are both carrying a key, she definitely will go to the forest as her action. And for that, she's allowed to, to regain a secrecy. The turn tracker. And then she has to face the skeletons, but she can now use her charge tactic card with two dice. So again, she needs a four or higher. 
And guess what? She was not, excess, not successful to fight the skeletons here. So she has to lower her grace one more time down to two now. Still not completely bad. And I think as she might be heading back to the monastery the next turn, she will give the key to the druid and you can exchange these objects freely. The only restrictions are in respect to holy relics, so each character can only carry one holy relic. And every time you give a holy relic to a different character, this character also loses one secrecy. Again, the end of the round, we come to the face of the necromancer. We will increase the darkness track. This time we definitely have to roll the die because the knight is again up at one. And no, that's definitely not going to happen. So the necromancer finds the knight and will also come to the forest. And additionally, he will spawn a new blight. And here at the forest, this is a spy. And we already know the spy. The spy lets you lose one secrecy each turn. Again, we come to the end of my episode. This time I really decided to go with only two rounds from now on. So this gives you the opportunity to give me some hints on how to play this game. And also you, it's easier to find mistakes and correct them in an only two round variant rather than a three round variant. I hope that's fine with you. I hope you are still enjoying my playthrough of um, The Darkest Night and hope to see you soon in my next episode and until then, bye bye!